But it actually got banned. I'm surprised y'all got that. By Kmart, there. they wouldn't let us sell it in Kmart. Is that right? To to uh, obscene. Yes. How about well, that? Oh, it was sad. It was <laughs> sad. We could have had a blue light special for <laughs> Hey y'all, this is Chris Hicks and welcome to the Southern Rock Insider. If you like what you see, please hit subscribe and click the notification bell. It's time to rock Southern style. The Southern Rock Insider. Howdy today, y'all. We're here at Capricorn Studio in uh, historic downtown Macon, Georgia, with one of my favorite groups, Stillwater. C.B. Lacey, Rob Walker, and Mike Causey. Three guys from Stillwater. We got them here today. We're going to talk about the trials and tribulations of rock and roll and more. Hi, uh, welcome, fellas. Good to see Thank you. Guys. Thank Great you. Is. Let's take a time machine back to uh, possibly late '60s. When did the band start, and how did how did you guys get together originally? We all played different bands, all of us. And Rob got came in from Guam, I think. Panama. 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 <laughs> we played at high school. CB and Rob and I with Eddie Stone and some other friends. And it, like I said, there was a bunch of different bands. And Bobby was in a band called Cold Water Army. Army. Yeah. And Bobby and I, when CB and I played the summer, we graduated in 72. Him and I and Eddie and Rob played together. Yeah. We had a band called Highway. Right. And we went out and played St. Simons and just, we played, We like I said, we did this thing with the Follies at the Warner Ops High School, big performance, and we were part of the backup band. And, and anyway, anyway, we went to school that fall after the summer of 72 when we graduated and Bobby and I ran into each other over the dorm and he was, they had their band, Cold War Army, and they were going to leave college and just play and try to play full time. And, and Bobby and I got playing together, we sat in the hotel room, about, not the hotel room, the dormitory, sitting there for about all afternoon play one day. He said, won't you come play with us? Told him about CB and yeah, we were playing together. And so he said, grab CB too. And so luckily he said, yeah. Yeah, yeah. well, I, yeah, I, I called I mean, him. College said, was real good to me. <laughs> me I had, too. I had K101 down to a science. <laughs> felt like it was kind of big move on. <laughs> Worked out well. And uh, so I called CB and we, and we started playing. Our first job, I think, was at University of Florida. That's where it was. Uh, down in Gainesville. And uh, so we started writing, that's how it got started. We started writing material and started putting in our own stuff with the music that we were playing, you know. Did you guys kind of kind of know you had a magical group there when you put it together? Did it go through many different member changes? I had to go through some changes. Like I said, we were doing like a lot of people copy stuff and going around the Southeast and playing. And, um, Just trying to make enough money so you get in the studio. Yeah, you know, that was the key. That was our deal when, when we, I didn't mean jump in on you. No, 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 that's I mean, it. That's good. It, the key was to try to uh, write, and you know we had to play coffee and play the bars and do all that so we'd get it up so we'd get in the studio. And that's what we've done for a long time. And we knew we was going to snitch this guy, so we already had him on the radar. So we got Rob, and then it was on from there. That's when the, all the sparks started really flying. Right, yep. So the sound of the band came together because yeah, okay. together you two guys, right. Bobby Goldman as well, and you two guys on guitar, uh, I don't know how to explain it, but uh, guitar players go together or they don't, and you guys really did. You know, I wonder how much of that was worked out, how much of that was natural, it came to y'all playing together that way. Well, I don't know, I think I think we just kind of naturally, we, we played like we were just kids when we were playing together in the Follies, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, right. and, and, yeah. uh, and we just we just loved making music, and, mm -hmm. and we just kind of fell to where yeah. It was a very natural kind of thing from from I came on, and of course when we got when I got my eventually joined the band with Bobby, you know, he's, he's such a amiable, you know, and a really talented player, you know, that that, that uh, you know it was easy to work things out. You yeah. know, I felt like you know it's yeah. just you know we we didn't really have to, you know, we weren't really doing a lot of you know. Uh, no confrontations or right. So kind of you know, the three guitar parts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, see, that's the key. Yeah. I mean, I watched all this and there was no ego. That's very important because mm -hmm. you, you got you know how that can be playing. You, sure. you know how that is. But these guys, I mean, we're all on the same ship and we we're going to do it and we we're going to take it to the top. And they right. they work stuff out. And I come back and I go, holy no. Yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> I think it came out in the music too. I just, I just want to say, what, personally, to me, Stillwater is one of my favorite bands of the whole Capricorn era. 
And uh, I think times had to change so drastically for the music business and for people's taste and all that. I think they would have been the biggest selling band that Capricorn had. Something about the songs were there. It was commercial without being commercial. It was tight. It was it was raw, but it was tight. Thank you. Um, really a unique sound you guys created. Great guy. Thank you. It was, um, you know, we play, not play, try to, you know, we'd always try to do your best. I play as hard as I can play. And then Rob plays something I'm going. I I was doing it, and boy, I felt I always felt like the sound was intact yep. before I even got into the band. Because mm -hmm. I remember seeing those guys play at Jack's Supper Club in, in Warner Robins, and, and I was like, I'm just blown away because I was just like this, this yin and yang, you know, with with CB singing and and and, and, and Jimmy singing, you know. Right. And it was just like interesting. Rob Walker hearing Stillwater sort of. I was, yeah. I was yeah. a fan. I was a fan yeah. first. You know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, and I really I thought, man, these guys have got something, you know. Even the look I thought was really cool at mm -hmm. the time. You know, when you guys were wearing all that flannel shirts and yeah, blue yeah, jeans, yeah, and I thought, yeah, oh, yeah, they yeah, look yeah. like you know, they look I like a man. That's all we can afford. That's that's fashion. Somebody fashion. else's closet. Yeah. So here's a loaded question for you guys: House band at Uncle Sam's. Okay. During yeah. those years, y'all must have seen some crazy late nights and lots of people coming in from time to time. Huh? <laughs> that yeah. that yeah. we did, my friend. Yeah. That I can only imagine. Well, what's a couple of your favorite memories from, from Uncle Sam's and visitors coming in late night? It was a nightclub yeah. here in town out on Gray Highway. Yeah. And on the first album, we did a song called Sam's Jam. Yeah, that's right. And, we, and that song kind of came from what you're asking about. You know, because we'd be up there playing and we played at Lakeside as well. Yeah. And Bobby Whitlock from, from, from playing with Eric Clapton came out there and sat in with us. And we did a song off Layla Alp called Thorn Tree in the Garden, which nobody did back then. And we did Layla. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think too many people did Layla back then. And uh, Bobby came in and played. And that was, it was just so cool. And different people would always show up. Yeah. Yeah. And at Lakeside, we had, a, had Dickie and Elvin and, and Toy, Carwell, just all the Elvin Bishop. And they showed up. Greg showed up. And they sit in and play. And we got to, we got to play in front of Bo Diddley. We backed him up. Yeah, we backed him. And then yeah. I had to go get a appendix. Yeah, he had his appendicitis. <laughs> yeah, the next day he said he was in the hospital. Yeah, I'm going. Oh, but there was wow. a lot of folks coming in and out. It was it was a it was kind of it was a lot of fun. Let's do that. Came yeah, out. That was, that was, gonna, that, that was my. I was going to say that was my favorite because yeah. we jammed and I mean Ooh. it was just like. It was something. Wasn't it? I wish we had a little bit of that. That was a magic little moment. Les was. He came, he came out and sat in, and I just, my jaw was just hit the floor. Yeah, what, player, player, what a player, yeah. a singer. Yeah. And, and it was so neat. And he just <laughs> take it somewhere to see if he'd follow him. We, we just followed him. You know, he was incredible. And one time Greg came out, and yeah. Mikey, I think he just got his marshal. Adam, we just got in Marshall's way up at the and Greg come around and gonna play and say, Yeah, that's fine, so he gets something. <laughs> he spilled a drink down. He went to do something and he hit the drink. Put oh, that in. And he, he got down on the floor. <laughs> he sobered up when he got down on the floor, kinda of reached up with his finger. <laughs> was scared to touch that because he thought he was gonna get electrocuted. <laughs> and yeah. and he said, Hey, if it messes up I'll buy you a new one. I went sure. You know, I'm like, Yeah. And I'm like Hey Greg, let me call him. Can you get his number and call him and say, "Man, yeah, I thought he said hey, you may have got any, if it's bad, anything. I got plenty of money." Yeah, he was like, "Yeah, like I take care of it." I was like, "Yeah, I'll probably oh, never yeah. see him again." But <laughs> <laughs> that, that was interesting. But that was that was some good times. That really was some shining times, and that was very instrumental on getting us signed with Capitol. It was, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Was Tom out there? That that that. When we, I don't know how that worked. Oh, you weren't there? You I wasn't there yet. I really think, I think, I really so. think he was. <laughs> I think you're right. I think Tom, and I wasn't, I didn't see him. I think Bobby saw him. Somebody he'd come out there and like the band a lot and wanted to put it, take us yeah. in the studio. Here yeah. we go. And by the way, the person we're talking about, Tom Down. Tom Down, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, unbelievable producer. You know, and he was in town working on uh, Wet Willie's album. What was it? Yeah. Dixie Rock? Dixie Rock. And so we, I guess he talked to some of the guys, me and Mike, don't run, we weren't involved, know, but that's that. what we heard later, but yeah, that uh, he wanted to get us in here and do some demos. So to do that, 
uh, I think Fit Willie would come in like at 11 or 12 and, you know, and then start doing so. He had to get us in early, so about 5 o'clock in the morning, we were up there <laughs> trying to try put demos down so he could you know we're here and listen to what we had. We had a lot of rhythm and music, and, uh, and he was listening to it. And I don't know where, it, I guess it must have got to Phil, and next thing we know, we signed, and that's how it worked out. That's so cool, man. It's funny how everybody remembers different things because Al will tell that story. Yeah. But Al really remembers a lot about it, you know. He said that if Phil didn't want us, Tom had told Phil if he didn't want us, he would he mind us if he took us to another label. <laughs> I, I think Phil went down there and I go to a different label. Did he say that? Yeah, that's what I heard. So I'll keep him right here. Yeah. 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 That's okay. yeah. If you don't want him, I'd like to record him. But oh, I, I want him. I want him. I can't yeah. do that. <laughs> that was how Buddy, I think that's how Buddy got the picture because he could, he has, he had obligations and he couldn't work with us. So I think they started looking for a producer and that's how we got Buddy Bowie out of Atlanta. And plus we listened to CB and I, oh, yeah, we that's the first album, a friend of ours gave us the first ARS record, Mount Rhythm Session. And we just loved it. We play it this you know, all the time. And when his name came up, of course, when we were kids too, you know, I got his 45s, like Spooky and Stormy, and all the songs he had, I still got those. And it's like, yeah, can we work with this guy? Oh, he, I, Absolutely. No problem. It seemed to be a good fit for you guys, the cleanness of the, the tones, you know, the way the record was tight. I don't know, it seemed to, to really fit you guys, the sound that you already had, you know. Yeah. Yeah. But we worked with Tad and Buddy, and that was great. Yeah. Yeah. Buddy was, you know, helping. We sat down, he helped us writing, and just such a positive guy. Yeah. He can, boy, he could spit the songs out, and lyrics, and he yeah. also, uh, in the studio, it makes you feel real comfortable. Yeah. You know, yeah. He's a little nervous going in there the first time, you know, and, and uh, he just made everybody, I remember, he just made me feel real at ease. And it was it was a nice experience. He you always know. liked to go to Ufala. He had a place down there and liked to write. Mm -hmm. yeah. So he took a, a bunch of us down there. And uh, he and Rob, Rob had that lick. And strong, he's a, we, that's we were down there for so long. And then all of a sudden, next thing we know, we're hauling butt back to Atlanta. We yeah. put mine better there in one take. All right. It was it was home. It was gone. And I mean, I'm going, like, what? I talk and get talk. Yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> crazy. And we said, buddy, what are you on? <laughs> Man, it's, 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 you know, you had to see him. He just sit there with that beard. He's, it, it, it's, 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 this is going to be a hit now. I'm telling you. Hit. And, That's uh, right. And, but it, it it was amazing how it really did work out. Yeah, it was the last song yeah, that we put on. Yeah, we yeah. had that thing and bam, it hit. And uh, I was like, wow, pretty crazy. It was amazing. Crazy thing. Like this song. Uh, when you guys signed with Capricorn, uh, did you have other interests from other record companies at that time? Is uh, How did that come to be? It's kind of crazy. You know, all the years we were trying to get a record deal, all of a sudden it hits, and then we got one or two others won't uh, us too, and uh, but uh, it was a gentleman that was a big promoter in Colorado. Barry Fay flew in, and I don't know, I I don't know how it all developed, but he wanted us to leave Capricorn, and uh, he was going to put us with Columbia. Uh, he had a, he had another guy, Tommy Bolin. Tommy Bolin, he, he, yeah, he, he yeah. said, "I'm telling you, this is where you need to be." And then there was, I think Atlantic yeah. was that was after us at the same time. I think that was Dick Woolley, wasn't it? Yeah. Dick was, uh, I think he signed the Winters Brothers. And then it was between, all that was hitting. And, uh, but I tell you, the one that was the big one was Barry Fay didn't, actually, I think we had the album, and had it, we, we were finished, we, we had it finished. Come out. Yeah. And he did he said, let's just hold it, let me, let me get y'all and we'll take it to Columbia and I can get you with Columbia. And him being one of the big promoters, because you had Bill Graham out in, in San Francisco. And see, another real quick story on that, now that I think about, when we were playing with Charlie in San Francisco at Willowland, and we we played, and Mikey, everybody, and we had them in the rafters, they were going crazy. And uh, I think Bill Graham called Phil and said, these guys would be the next Almond Brothers. That's pretty cool. I think. And, he, was uh, big. he was big into it. And then Barry Fay, I mean, you got two, you got the, the West Coast and right here in the middle, that 
wanted and stuff. And we just, we were young. We've got our record deal and we've just finished it. And they want us to not go, not release it with this company. I mean, I had to rock the boat. You no, know, I, I was saying, Lord, we could be sitting over here and that thing would be in a can and never come out again, you know, so. It was just uh, which could have happened so yeah you know, you know so we just you know, know you know and especially i think what were we 22 23 at the yeah, time maybe yeah, yeah. uh it, it, it was it was a tough call i think buddy was kind of interested and i think he wanted it to stay where it was at maybe because he could get his check <laughs> yeah <laughs> so I, now that i think about it i'm old over wiser now yeah. no but anyway that that was one of the the things that it's just crazy how all that worked, all those years of trying to get one, and all of a sudden, you got all these people want you at the same time. It's crazy. And then, then it comes to nobody wanting you. So, but that's the way of the business. Right. So, know. Rob, here's a question for you. Can you confirm this is the truth? Is Mike causing your own? Well, actually, I know the story behind that. He's the one that, I think it was David well, Alexander was a photographer. Okay. He had done, like, uh, I guess, Hasten Down the Wind, you know, with Lynn Ronstadt. Mm -hmm. He'd done the Dewey Brothers, uh, Minute by Minute album cover and uh he took the picture on the back of the album but then uh i guess he told us the story about that he said that you know they actually did that in la you know yeah. went about five in the morning they took this you know his, 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 uh, david, oh, pardon me, david alexander's assistant and uh so that's who that really they is they said he just posed out there <laughs> and then and they would jump in a car drive around and, <laughs> and then do it again yeah but no, I, I don't know i think it was really kind of the old school Photoshop right. in there. Yeah, right. They tried, Super uh, they, tried, yeah. they tried to warn them on the corner, but they stayed in <laughs> But it actually got banned right, got by Kmart. Kmart. They wouldn't let us sell it in Kmart. Is that right? To, to uh, obscene. Yes. How about well, that? Oh, it was sad. It was <laughs> sad. We could have had a blue light special for that. <laughs> I, I, but I thought I was going to bring up some controversy back then. You know, that was 78. Is that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, so. I'm thinking, we probably won't sell many with that. Kind of <laughs> <laughs> really? you, know, I mean, you know, I'm just thinking, we got we got snakes, and then we go to a butt on a day. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was my next question. How long did it take to get the snakes to pose that way in the first one? Listen, you know that story. <laughs> yeah, that you know. was an interesting story. Yeah, me. you know it. Robbie's what know the story. What was it? What was it? The, the, the we are the weird. weird. Yeah. Some, some, Bob Weir? Yes, I think that's Bob Weir. Yeah. But okay. anyway, that, uh, he had, uh, I guess, come across a, an oil slick on the beach, and then he saw these dead snakes. Oh. So he actually, uh, that's what it is. I mean, it almost looks like, uh, you know, the, those are kind of suspended in space, but, you know, it's really just sand with an oil okay. slick, and he took a, I just, just joined them together. <laughs> How about that? So it really is a thing, you know? Yeah. 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 But I thought, what a brilliant, that was a neat photograph, man. And that was just in his portfolio, I think, at the time. Was, uh, a lot of bands came through Capricorn Records here in those days and kind of held being from this area when, when they would be from Florida or Alabama or places like that. And these are our guys here. These are truly central Georgia guys from Warner Robins that all went to school and grew up here. And it's kind of like, hey, you know, we, we, we've got some guys here, but these are our guys right here. <laughs> these are our guys. Thanks for watching this episode of Southern Rock Insider. Please hit subscribe and click the notification bell so you won't miss a single episode. If you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future episodes, please respond below or you can email us at southernrockinsider at gmail.com. This is your Southern Rock Insider, Chris Hicks, and thanks again for watching. Southern Rock Insider.